If you want to learn how to service, repair and restore 19th and 20th century mechanical clocks, then subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. In this video, we'll be looking at repairing a Europa brand German made alarm clock. They were very popular in the 70s and 80s. You can see there's no hammer for the alarm function. I don't know whether that's dropped inside or it's not there at all. We'll check that out once we open it up. You'll also notice there's no hand winding key there. However, yeah, that's a point there that should have a hand winding key on it. We can use uh, watch keys, small watch keys. I'll put one of those on it. I forget what number it is, but we can use that to turn it round and you'll notice that the hands are moving quite properly. We're now ready to start dismantling the movement. First thing we'll do is we have to take off the bells up there, the alarm bells. Those two pieces there, that's where the alarm hammer should be, but it's not. Uh, we've got our little uh, spanner there. We'll loosen each of those nuts that are holding the, the handle on. A bit tight. Uh, it's got him, it's moving now. Do that. Over to the other side. Same thing, put a spanner on it, loosen the nut off. They've seriously been screwed down, those things have very, very tight. There's no need for them to be as tight as that. Take both the nuts off, put them in a tray, and then remove the handle on the top. It also appears to be pretty tightly attached. Got it, it's gone now. Now we can remove the two cup bells. And have a look and see what we've got left. Now those two pillars there have to be removed because they hold the back of the clock in. And if you have a look there, in the back at the bottom of the pillars, you can see where they screw into a little piece of metal. There it is there on the left and on the right. So we'll unscrew those one at a time. They come out rather easily. Put them in the tray with the nuts that came off. Now we'll take the winding key off. No, we won't. We'll leave it exactly where it is. And we'll take the bottom legs off Next, and they're the last pieces that hold the case together with the movement inside it. Unscrew the first leg, comes out easy, leg, foot, whatever you want to call it. Try the other one, naturally it's a bit tighter. Have to put a pair of pliers on that, I think, to loosen that off. Flat jaws on the pliers, you'll notice there's no serration there. We don't want to mark the foot as we take it off. Just a little bit to unwind it. Take it out, put it aside in our tray. Take that piece off another foot or something you might call it doesn't particularly matter right now the bezel and the crystal come straight off well the crystal fell out but it came straight off anyway and that's the movement with the face and the hands and the back. Right, we'll put that on a, a watch pad, leave it there. 
have a look at the crystal yeah it's dirty but there's also a few scratches on it so we'll clean that up before we put it in the bezel and the front part of the case isn't too bad but we'll check that before we put it back together again right check to see what the hands look like now we're going to remove the hands first thing we'll do we'll put a piece of plastic over the top of the face of the clock and they were the the tools that we're going to use to remove the hands they're actually designed for removing hands on on watches but this is a pretty small movement so it'll do the trick I would think there we go first ones come off with no damage to the to the face because we had the plastic the piece of plastic there turn it around pair of tweezers that hand comes off we'll repeat that operation plastic bag across the top again our watch hand removers put them in underneath and very gently twist some left and right until the hand comes off that's the hour hand the first one was a minute hand of course pair of tweezers once again pick it up put it aside right the hands are off so we'll now remove the mainspring winder. Wind it backwards, of course. Remove it. Once we've done that, the back part of the case, the clock, will come straight off. Put the winder aside. Now, we now have to undo those three screws there that we can see either side of the hand winder or where the hand winder should be very tight it's way too tight like most of the parts on this clock so far have been screwed in far too tightly We're running a risk of destroying the threads or at least putting serious burrs on them which will in time cut the threads off the screws this one is getting close back on the watch pad so we don't damage uh, the movement unscrew the first screw not quite there tiny bit more remove it with a pair of pliers put it into our dish then we'll remove the other two I'll do it in fast time it's a bit boring seeing this seeing one you've seen them all there we go, almost finished. We'll put the screwdriver in, take the last little bit out to make sure it's loose. Remove it with a pair of pliers and then the back comes straight off. And there's our movement, not finished yet, but we're getting closer. Have a look see what we got the next thing we have to do is remove the face from the movement oh there's a nice little bit of fluff there that's collected over the years the rest, the rest of it seems to be in pretty good nick could do with an oiling and a, a cleaning but uh, the movement seems to be okay now I'll blow a bit of dust out of movement from various places you can see the hairspring starting to work there yep just a lot oh, it's all right that's very good stopped because it's dirty but we'll get that going once we've cleaned it and that won't be a problem probably a little bit of dirt on the balance staff etc right now have a look we're looking to see how we remove the the face from the clock and we have a look there and we can see there's a tapered pin 
very poorly. It hasn't been finished off, but it's a taper pin. We'll remove that bit of fluff in a moment. Turn it round, have a look again. There's another one. And there should be a third one here somewhere. Get rid of that old man's beard out of it. Mm, fair bit of it too. Right, and that's the third one in there. Okay. Back onto the watch pad again. A pair of pliers. I bet these are pushed in there pretty tightly too. Everything else is over screwed, over wound. We'll use some pointy nose pliers this time. Easier to access than using the square nose ones. There's the first one, we'll put him aside. Movement round, another one there. Twist and turn, gee that is tight. You'd wonder why people feel the need to push these things in and belt them in quite so hard. It's damaging the movement. Only a little bit, but you keep doing that, it's going to make a serious mess of things. Right, we'll see if we can get the, the face off now. Still tight, still holding. Something's holding it on. Pull it around. No, definitely not moving. Put a screwdriver under it and turn it slightly and see if that makes a difference. I don't think it's going to. There's something else that's holding it down. Not those big obvious screws that's holding the movement, the top and bottom plate of the movement together. And there it is, it just lifts up like that. Magic. After all that drama. That's the face, we'll put that aside. There's, there's the movement, the top of the movement. Good morning. 